Okay, so this one's cheating a little bit. The rule was that I was going to go and do a match day vlog from every team that I managed in non-league to legend this year. And this one's from my Twitch save. But look, who wouldn't want to come for a weekend in Geneva? It's Servette versus Young Boys. It's first versus second in the Swiss League. Let's go and let's go and do a football. We've made it onto the tram, it's absolutely pouring with rain. We're in a bit of a rush now. It is uh, half past four, the match kicks off at six. We're about half an hour away on the tram, so we've jumped back on the tram, running through the pouring rain. Now we're heading out the city centre, back out onto the outskirts, where hopefully we'll be there in plenty of time for me to purchase a shirt and then watch some football. So we've got off the tram. I'm absolutely baffled, because this is the nearest tram stop to the football ground. It's just over an hour before kickoff. This, so that get like 15,000 people for a normal match. This is first versus second. They play young boys. So you'd expect maybe they might even push 20,000 on an attendance for this one. Just let me show, tell me what is missing from the nearest tram stop to the ground about an hour before kickoff. Where are any football fans? I don't understand. Right, we've made it a little further up the road. Still no sign of any football fans. However, that looks a lot like a football stadium. So I think we have to go up and around and that is the stadium just there. And there is incredible Hulk graffiti as well, which is also excellent. We've spotted one. He's got a jacket and a scarf on. Hey Kev, I hear you cry. What are the transport links like for this football ground? Well, allow me to elaborate. Just there is the tram stop we should have got off at, which is much nearer. Down here, you have all of the trains. There is a big road. There is a motorway. Ignore the mountains in the background. They're not an issue, but this is the football stadium. So I would say transport links, fairly solid. I am hoping we can get under this motorway over here where everyone else seems to be walking. Still no sign of a club shop though. I think we are about to hit a club shop, or at least that's definitely a stadium. Maybe not a club shop, but definitely a stadium, which is a good sign. There's the people, look, we found them. They've all come in from over there, I guess. I can actually hear football fans now as well which is the first time I've been able to hear any football fans, which is good. There you go, look, through this fence, if I poke the camera through the fence, you can just about see our first view of the pitch. There's like a smidgen of pitch in there. I think that's actually where we go in, entrance P. But we're doing a lap to try and find the club shop. So they were dressed like aliens. Fair enough. So just there, is the famous Ramada, where if you watched the Twitch streams, you will know that during my entire time as manager of Sevet, I lived in that Ramada. It's actually built into the stadium. Okay, this is inside the hotel. So this is the hotel. This is inside the hotel. That's the window. Look, look. How amazing is that? I want to sit and have my lunch there whilst watching the football. I want to watch in style. I never want to go outside the whole time I'm in Geneva. This is not a corporate box. This is the hotel conference room. Look, there you go. You can sit in there and have a meal. Because it actually connects to the stadium and the conference room in that conference center looks out over the pitch. So you can stay in that hotel and then basically have your evening meal looking out over the pitch. They do packages within the hotel that actually involve match tickets. And you can go in there, have a meal while the match is on and watch the match. Those tickets were more expensive than the ones we got, and there was no room to actually stay in the hotel either, which is double sadness. It's almost as if this is a big football match. So we've come around to this side of the stadium. This is clearly where we're supposed to be um, because there's lots of people around and most importantly, a club shop. So the job now is to head into the club shop and see if they have a 3XL shirt 
because when I tried to buy one online, not only were they crazy expensive, which I expect it to be crazy expensive here too, because everything in Geneva has been crazy expensive, but I won't have to pay the crazy shipping costs that I was gonna have to pay. So fingers crossed, they'll have my size. They do stock them on the website, so I know they exist. So it's uh, a bit smaller in here than the last club shop I went in in Barcelona, but the hope is, I mean, there's not many shirts here at all. Is this going to be my size, do we think? 2XL. No. Much size. There's literally only four shirts there. We've got another 2XL in... Oh, no, there's a 3XL in the away shirt. So maybe we get an away shirt. Or... Alfie's getting a scarf, it seems. Maybe I get a uh, a jacket because it's cold. They only got oh, they got it in my they've got an away shirt in my size, but no home shirt. Very sad. Or maybe I'll just get a bum bag. This club shop is actually smaller than Preston was. Yeah, I think I might. I've got the thing is I've got last season's away shirt already that I got off classic football shirts, so I've got one now those colours already. So I really hoped I'd be able to get the home one, but alas. They do not have it, so I guess we just have to go for this one and then we'll slip it on. So, purchase is complete. I went for the away shirt because it's the only one in my size and a scarf. And as part of the process, as an extra bonus, I've lost Alfie. He's now get, he sorted the tickets, but he sent them to me now, so it doesn't really matter. But I no longer know where he is. I've got what I came for. Now let's, uh, oh, found him again. He was just in the queue behind me. So I am now appropriately kitted out, got my scarf, got my shirt. Now we just need to find our way in. It sounds like it's getting very noisy and raucous in there, which is good stuff. Uh, we're gonna pick an entrance where they haven't seen me holding a camera up, Alfie. I can see you're eager to get in, but let's at least try and hide it a little bit. Football grounds are generally not that happy about them. So we've made it in, it is absolutely pouring with rain again. My hair is collapsing, which is not a good look. Uh, Pre-match food review though. Um, Trying to explain that I wanted a pretzel was complicated, but I saw a massive pretzel and I had to get one of them. Do you not want a pretzel to wash down all that cheese from earlier? I can't eat anything else ever again. <laughs> and they also didn't have Coke Zero, so I had to get a full fat Coke, which I haven't had in years. And it isn't very nice. Alfie, believe it or not, didn't get ID'd buying a beer. It's the, it's the, low, the lower age here. Pretzel. It is absolutely pouring with rain. This is the view from our seats. It's about 20 minutes before kickoff. I imagine the rain and the fact the kickoff has been moved to six o'clock for TV, so it is on TV. I imagine the two of those things combined are going to be leading to a lot of people staying away today. I'm reliably informed they normally get about 15,000 people here, probably for the pretzels. So we've got a little section of away fans over here who were quite noisy when they all just turned up together a few minutes ago. They all just kind of swarmed in. They're also all wearing the same clothes, all dressed in black jackets, it seems, which weirdly, when we swing around and look at the home fans in their ultra section, they're also all wearing black jackets. I feel like I should go and get a black jacket from somewhere. You'd fit right in. Go get in with the ultras. just had the team news which editor Chris will now put over Alfie's face so that you can see who is in the team. Not many names I recognise from my Twitch save because of course we didn't pick them up until we were done with Pennabon so we were a few seasons in. Importantly though my boy Frick is in goal which is always always good value having a goalkeeper called Frick and star player Amtunes is in the team in midfield. He was the best player for my Servette team. Interestingly as well, other names I recognise, the fullbacks are Gail Clichy and Kevin and Babu. So that's going to be interesting. I didn't recognise anyone in the young boys team because they're rubbish and they're cowards and they're going to lose. And they cheated me out of the title several times. 
because they're monsters, but this is their team. Again, over Alfie's face. If you really care, they are a bunch of cowards, every single one of them. I don't know what just happened. Everyone started to stand up and then a man sang a song. And then everyone started cheering. Was that the national anthem? What just happened? That was very odd. But I think we are about to get underway. Everyone then, the atmosphere level has just gone up a notch in here. There you go, the flares are off already. They've done a Cambridge, even in Cambridge colours. They have done a Cambridge. Flares off, match hasn't even started. Pathetic. Grow up, I hope you lose. All that money spent on tickets and travel and none of them are going to be able to see the match. Because they've gone over the top with a talcum powder. Ridiculous. What is happening over there? For such a small crowd, the atmosphere coming out of both ends is really impressive. I doubt they're going to be able to keep this up, surely. But everybody in these two ends behind the goal seems very up for it today. I doubt they can see anything out of that corner. And we are underway. Do a football! 20 minutes ago, I was worried about being allowed in with a camera. They've just started an actual fire over there now. This is bonkers. An actual flare that was actually on fire. You can see actual smoke, not the coloured stuff that we had before. This is madness. And both sets of fans are absolutely on it. In all of the many hundreds of football matches I've been to over the years, I have never known so much noise be made by such a small group of people and it's coming from both ends of the ground. There can't be more than, what, a thousand people, two thousand people in there? And it's the same at this end. There's obviously a few more at this end because it's the home end. But because of the amount of noise they're making and the fact that it's a bold design on the stadium, the roof is angled just right, it is such a loud atmosphere in here. I've never known anything like it. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was at a Barcelona match with nearly 100,000 people at. And it wasn't this loud. This is awesome. Oh my word, Antunes nearly did a world. He went past about three players. He's gone out for a corner, but goodness me, that would have been a moment. Right, this corner, it's got, I've, I've decided it's going to be a goal. That was our boy. Well, it's 1-0 to young boys. They've set up another flare. Weirdly, you wouldn't know it, noise-wise. They've just been relentless with the singing, as have they. There wasn't even like a cheer when the goal went in. It's such a weird atmosphere to play football in, but Cross came in from the right-hand side. Really simple header, past, past good old Frick. This is why we replaced him. But that was bizarre. It, like, if you were down buying a burger, you wouldn't know that there'd been a goal. There was no change to the noise levels at all. I've never experienced anything like that at a football match when a goal has gone in. We're more than halfway through the first half now. The noise has been relentless. Neither set of fans have stopped, even for breath. Well, that's the first time the atmosphere has changed in here all afternoon. Uh, we're about half an hour in. The guy who was booked previously has just clotheslined a Sebek player when he was through on goal and presumably because he was the guy on a yellow card, not even a free kick is given. And everyone is less than amused, it's fair to say. It's still 1-0. The frustrating thing is the score like the goal was very much against the run of play in the game. It has Sebek have definitely had the better of the possession, the better of the attack so far. It was just the one breakaway from Young Boys. Cross comes in, it was really easy. But it's not like they've been relentless, if anything. It feels like they've been a little hard done by to be a goal down and very hard done by for the fact that young boys have still got 10 men on the pitch, 11 men. I don't know how many players on a football team. Kev Mass is a complicated thing. 41 minutes gone, young boys have just hit the post again. Once again, coming down that right hand side. Um, please, can we have half time now? Please and thank you. And maybe a left back under 40, although as I say that, so that got him behind him, just don't quite have the pace 
to get past the last man. But what you can hear is because it's not just ultras in the Zibet side of things, when they are attacking, you hear the noise come around from the rest of the ground. I'm desperate to see a Zibet goal because I think it, the atmosphere is going to be like nothing I've ever experienced before. It's going to be so loud in here. They are still not shut up. It's half time and it's still going on at both ends. Absolutely mad. There we go then, second half o'clock. Hopefully there's been a chance to regroup <laughs> and we can see a goal go in at the right end. That would be very much appreciated. And immediately the, uh, the noise starts again. I tell you one other thing that I've noticed that I'm not used to at football matches, the smoking. Football smells like football smelt in England in the 90s. Smoking all around me. side this time their left so not Clichy's fault um, just rolled it across goal only the keeper to beat and it's a fantastic save from Frick I mean that was almost immediately less than a minute into the second half young boys have started the way they ended the first half so that's not ideal but it's now a free kick to Savet just inside the young boys half so fingers crossed a goal here changes everything oh! close to an equaliser. This time, Clichy absolutely on top of the guy that's been ruining his afternoon, won the ball off him, lovely cross into the far post, and the header is, uh, is just over. So that are knocking on the door now, 10 minutes into this first half. This feels like the opportunity, they've got to score now, or it ain't happening. Because I don't speak French, I don't fully understand the context of it, but every time there's a yellow card, on the big screen up there, they just put a picture of a wolf and some French text. I have no idea why. They just like to bring out the yellow card wolf. And it's so confusing. So we've got some substitutions being made. We are about half an hour left in the game. Hopefully these substitutions are the magical difference maker. This is me crossing my fingers. This lot are absolutely bonkers. And yes, I want one of those horns. Yes! One one! this end of the pitch I mean what how did I had my bag searched on the way in how are they getting in with multiple fireworks it's another corner another corner for Sebet it has been all Sebet since the goal we've got about 15 minutes left there, there's at least three flares at all times as well. I don't know how they're not setting fire to the flags that they're flailing around in front of all the flares. They're having a lovely time for a team that are at 1-1. But it is a corner. And the ball is with Antunes on the edge of the area. Plays it into the box. Oh, my word. The header. Narrowly, narrowly misses. There's another goal coming, I tell you. They've just announced the attendance at 9,189 for first versus second. It's not great, is it? The ground is a third full, maybe. It would have been nice to tip it over 10,000, though. Another yellow card. Hold on, let's see if we can get 
the yellow card wolf. So we get the little cartoon and then we get whatever that is and then there's the yellow card wolf. Every single time. It's a free kick to Seve over near the corner flag. Uh, it, we're just hitting 82 minutes. All of a sudden I can smell devil's lettuce in here as well. I'm losing my voice from all the cheering. I'm, I'm as into this as I've been into most posh matches I've ever been to. This means a lot. Four minutes being added on. Don't know where he's got four minutes from. clear-ish and now they are clear and the counter-attack is on there's only the goalkeeper back and they're through come on come on they've got a man back to go they're through on goal oh it's a last ditch oh it's an acrobatic and it's cleared off the line oh my word basically they got clear one on one with the keeper drilled it into it came back up in the air We've made a little bit of an escape to get away from the ground before they let the young boys fans out because they seemed pretty miffed by the whole affair but goodness me what a match to come to like i said i don't know how much of the footage from the match was actually usable because it was so loud around me but i said during the match that it's uh having lost and been bettered by young boys so many times with the football manager save it felt so good to uh to get one over them in an actual football match very happy couldn't have asked for a better afternoon to come from behind like that. You can hear that my voice is going, which is so silly for a game involving a team that I have no right to be that invested in, but it was so cool. I now need to find my way back to my hotel because it's nearly half past eight local time. So I need to collect Dana from the hotel and we need to go out and find something to eat. I'm actually looking around me now. There's lots of restaurants here. I wonder if she's brave enough to come down here and meet me. 
spoilers, she won't be. I need to go and fetch her and bring her back. And to be fair, I'm probably not dressed for a restaurant with a servette shirt on. But hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it for me. There is going to be another match day vlog coming very, very soon. I'm off to Turin in the very near future for the Eventus match day vlog. And uh, hopefully you'll join me again there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. You know the drill. Say bye bye to Alfie. And I will see you again very soon. Oh, don't forget to actually watch on Twitch as well, because that's where this all came from. And the highlights, if you want to catch up with this event stuff, is all on the Lujo too. Editor Chris will be very happy I saved that until after you thought I was leaving. Toodle pip.